My name is Sarah Witoff and I'm one of the RN LVAD coordinators at Seton. We've seen patients from as far north as Waco down to Canyon Lake and closer to San Antonio. We see patients from as far away as Victoria to the east, the southeast of us, and Bryan College Station, and then as far west as San Angelo. There are probably about 12 LVAD patients in Williamson County, and at Seton we have a total of 54 patients on support right now. Probably somewhere in the mid-50s, I have patients as uh, elderly as in their early 80s and as young as in their mid-20s. The best part of my job is the relationship that I build with my patients. I typically meet people at the time that they are undergoing testing to see if they're candidates for LVAD. We start to talk about what life with an LVAD is like, what the benefits are, what the risks are, and then from there I work with that patient the entire time that they're being worked up while they're preparing for surgery and after surgery. And after surgery my primary job is to teach people everything they need to know about the device. And so when you're spending that much time with somebody you can't help but get to know them and get to know their families and, and really become um, close. The LVAD will fix what I had a little bit and we are accelerate the priority to, to be in the list for a new organ. The device that makes me more mobile, it gives me the freedom to do the cooking, some teaching, some, uh, some uh, special for a friend of mine in the restaurant, do the cooking in the house from all the things that I don't supposed to eat but I'll do it and Carol eats it or throws it away. He's been so much better, so much more consistently able to do things. He's driving regularly, goes to the hospital. He's a lot more independent. He's exercising. She keeps me in track and diet and uh, the medicines. She changed my dressing every night. She functions all those things that I need to be taking care for the, for the whole situation this, that I carry. She's my rock. You just have to manage everything to keep him healthy and keep the equipment running effectively. The Elvad has kind of limited me a lot of areas. Traveling, dancing, going to concert or big auditoriums. I learned to live with those things. No regrets. I know what, uh, what consequences comes with these apparatus. I'm quite comfortable living with it. He would have to have the VAD to keep his organs healthy in order to be able to get the transplant. Of my 54 patients, only six of them are listed for transplant right now. And the ones who aren't listed for transplant are limited by things like their BMI being too high, the fact that they've been smoking, um, sometimes kidney function or lung function can limit their eligibility for transplant as well. To qualify for transplant, there's much stricter criteria. And part of that is because the expectation is that people who receive heart transplants live for three years. And so if people are so sick that we don't think we can help them to live for three more years, then we look more to destination therapy LVAD as an option. And there are still criteria for being healthy enough to undergo such a big open heart surgery, but overall the criteria is less stringent so that more people can benefit from the therapy. Right now I'm waiting for a transplant that it might happen today or in a year from now. My BMI is the body mass index. I have to maintain that in order to qualify for the organ. In terms of comorbidities, we see people struggle with controlling their diabetes and having an A1C level that's under our parameter for transplant eligibility. Kidney function and heart failure often go hand in hand, but some people do have intrinsic kidney failure that isn't related to their heart failure, and we don't see that get better after LVAD. And so those patients may need either a heart and a kidney, or may not be eligible for heart transplant for that reason. Hopefully there won't be any need to have EMS come as long as we're doing our part. I think the most important thing that I would want first responders to know is that you guys are truly part of our team and you guys are often our eyes and ears in the field. And so I don't want you guys to feel alone out there in responding to these patients' phone calls. Get us on the phone. Someone's on call 24-7 to help you guys, help the patients, uh, so that we can work together as a team to make sure that these guys are well taken care of. The 24-7 call phone number for our team is 512 797-4260.